Hello? You guys hear me? Hey, okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, so many, <laughs> so many people so far. That was awesome. Yeah, sorry for the slightly uh, delayed stream. As you can see, is my first time, so it's a little, it's a little trying to figure things out, but. Yeah, it should be starting soon. I am doing good. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're we're gonna we're starting a little bit soon, but I think everything is good. So I think I can start soon and hello uh thanks shelby hello i see you and uh thanks sarah for confirming whether things were working or not beforehand and uh, hello everyone that i see joining in yeah yeah hello Hello, hello. Okay. Um, no. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Addicted to this channel. That's awesome. Is this Krita? Yes. Yes, it is. It is Krita. Uh, that's because we also dropped a a shameless plug we also dropped a um crit tutorial video so kind of like oh you know what we'll use i'll use Krita, so you can kind of see it working for those who don't know how it works yeah yeah and you <laughs> it's a good smiley face <laughs> yeah thank you yeah i realized it's like oh you should uh everybody always has something on their screen but i was like so busy setting up i'm like oh the smiley face will do <laughs> okay a lovely circle yes i it's uh i didn't even bother closing it you know it's uh it's just uh you know <laughs> it's it's hair it's fluff okay awesome so i guess i'm gonna start then um yeah uh hello everyone my name is uh, josh as you can see on my avatar and everything and today uh, we have scheduled a gesture drawing session uh but we're gonna be doing it in a kind of animation approach or animation type style so that's what we're gonna be doing and for those who don't know who we are, we are Wing Canvas. Uh, we do a lot of YouTube videos, as you can see, we are on YouTube. Uh, but we're also a virtual class and such. So, yeah, if you want to check us out, we also have a website where you can check out our classes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're also a online art school. So, you know, we teach how to draw i'm one of the instructors uh, i teach the drawing and painting and animation class so yeah if you want to continue checking us out or maybe attend one of my classes feel free to look us up and everything um since we started a bit late though i i guess i'll just go right we'll just jump right into it and then every now and as we go through i'll like mention our other kind of social media stuff and other things of note yeah oh <laughs> it's very detailed yes <laughs> yes it is okay so um well you know what unfortunately mr smiley face here has got to go he's gonna go bye bye we're gonna delete mr smiley 
beautiful smiley face now. <laughs> so today we are going to be doing a gesture drawing session and I don't know why but I'm just gonna write it over here. We're gonna be doing some gesture drawing for animation and there are a lot of different ways that we can do gesture drawing and all that kind of stuff but today it's going to be more focused on the animation side of it and you might be like oh what does that mean uh well i'm going to show you if i can remember where i placed everything <laughs> so um when it comes to to like gesture drawing that you can do it the very realistic way very structured um, but for animation I think for animation you want to go in it with a lot of personality in your drawings with a lot of kind of it's more exaggerated and more stylized so that's gonna be how I'm approaching the gesture drawings once we get into it and I'm gonna be approaching it three different ways or I'm gonna be keeping three things in mind as I'm doing it and the first thing that I'm gonna be thinking about is silhouette so this is what I'm gonna be uh, kind of starting off with and you'll see this when we get into the different sections of our gesture drawing we're gonna do some variations in different time with different time lengths so we're gonna start off with a really really short and we're gonna go on to really longer kind of poses but the first thing that I'm going to kind of start off with is with the silhouette because it's like quick and easy. And all you have to do is look for the overall shape that the character has. You don't have to really think about the details or the clothing or the hair or the facial features. You're kind of just drawing a, uh, let's say, a thicker stick figure, basically. So I feel like it's an easy way to start off, easy way to to warm up and all that kind of stuff so yeah and then after that we're gonna maybe bump it up a little bit in difficulty but hopefully not too much uh the next thing we're gonna do is the bean shape um yeah it's so this one is gonna focus mostly on just the torso so yeah beans lots of beans um and all you have to do really is just draw a upper half and then a lower half kind of like a I guess snowman but there's no head on the snowman <laughs> and then you just connect the two so if you want to follow along when we start and you want to also draw a bean shape uh, it's pretty straightforward pretty like easy you can try it out this way we can start putting in some personality and some momentum in our drawing and if you want to you can also include the middle line that goes down the bean and if you have even more time you can start adding the limbs so you can give the stick figure uh, I don't know what kind of pose this bean will be doing but I don't know they're doing some like yoga pose or something but yeah you can start giving the bean like uh, you know some limbs and that way it'll even it'll add even more personality to it so this is one way that we're gonna be doing it oops moved the wrong thing and then the next thing we're gonna finish off with in terms of like the quicker simpler gesture drawings we're gonna finish it off uh with the first half of this stream with the pillow method where we're just gonna turn our poses and our figures into a pillow um, and similar with the bean, you just have you can break it down into two different parts. You can break it down into the upper half and then a lower half. And then you combine the two. And if you want to add like the little ear thingies or tassels, you can. Um, you don't have to. Uh, but it kind of gives it a little bit more, makes it a bit more adorable, a bit more personality. Um, and then the folds also help because it makes the pillow feel fluffier, you know, a bit squishier. You want to think about the mass and how it's like bending and folding all the time. So, yeah. So these are the three things that I'm going to be doing as we're doing the gesture drawing. And before we get started, I'm just going to show you what our schedule is. Schedule makes it sound so serious, but don't worry, it's not. 
it's not too serious. Our schedule is going to be uh, silhouettes uh, in the beginning, or I'm going to be doing them in the sil as a silhouette. You don't have to do them as silhouettes, but you can if you want to. Uh, we're going to be doing 10 30 second poses and then we're going to be doing eight one minute poses and I'm going to be doing all of these as a silhouette and you're welcome to join and follow along doing them in silhouettes but again you don't have to whichever way kind of works best for you uh, and then after that we're going to do the pillow and the bean and we're going to do half half so five of one and then five of the other but if you like one more than the other you can do both of them or you can just do one of them, I guess, kind of thing. Again, I mean, it doesn't really matter how you do it. So it's kind of up to you. And then we're going to finish it off with a character in stylization, because I think that's what everybody voted for in the poll. Um, I saw it was almost half half. Uh, I think the one that won out was stylized and exaggerated. So that's why that one's the longest one. Uh, but we I kind of like turning poses into characters, so We'll see how that goes and again i don't quite know exactly how it'll turn out because i'm also doing it fresh like everybody else so yeah when we get into the three 10 minute poses i'm gonna be turning them into a character but we will see how those turn out <laughs> so yeah that sound good we are going to start and just give me a sec. Oh, I gotta turn on the URL. Um, let me see. Okay. There we go. There's our, there's a monitor. I mean, there's the website so you guys can see it. Oh, and we are, I am using Krita, if anybody's curious. Uh, it's a free digital drawing software, and we just made a tutorial video of it. I think people would have uh, probably saw that if you're subscribed to the channel. So, yeah, if uh, you want to use Krita and, like, try it out, yeah. that's what I'm going to be using. And if you, like, don't know how I'm doing certain things, feel free to ask. I might be a little bit occupied with the... Uh, with the drawing though so if i miss your question uh i apologize in advance but yeah okay so if you want to follow along with the brushes i'm using too i'm using what am i using i'm using the ink brush rough um and i'm gonna eh, no, I'll keep it at 100 percent opacity and then i have the overview panel on that's uh how we get to see the entire image and you also get to see um how zoomed in you are on your canvas uh and then um i just also have the color picker up so am i left-handed and uh, no i am right-handed yeah uh okay so yeah that's what i'm doing and you'll also see that i'm quick zooming so you can use the mouse wheel but that's kind of annoying and inconvenient because i gotta like reach out for the mouse every time i want to zoom in and then control plus is also awkward so actually there's another shortcut for zooming in which is control and spacebar and you just zoom in by moving your mouse up so i'm gonna be doing that a lot so if you see that and you're like oh how's he zooming out so quickly that is how i'm doing it and okay so we are gonna get started i'm just gonna i think everything is checked off the way i want it and i think it is so everything looks good and i am gonna start in a few seconds hold up let me just get my timer and everything set up so i can keep track of time and everything uh okay Trying to find a spot to put it in. And don't worry, I'll give us breaks so we don't burn out. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start off with 5.30 seconds and then 15 one minutes. So we are going to start 
in three, two, one. Forgot that the image is on the on the left. You know, sometimes I feel like uh, gesture drawing is like a race. You know, you kind of like, oh no, didn't have enough time. So, yeah, yeah, definitely did not have enough time. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try to not be too picky because that's what ends up happening is that I get too picky and then I end up losing track of time and everything so you can see I'm being very scribbly and that's something that I like to mention a lot to the classes as well to the students is to like you know what just your drawing should be fun you know it should be very loose you know, don't worry too much if you're making mistakes or anything. Kind of just have fun. If it's a little goofy and it's a little, like, odd looking, it should be fine. You know, especially for warm-up. You know, it's 30 seconds. It's really, really quick. So you don't really have too much time to be too picky anyway. So it is what it is. And sometimes it'll look great. And then sometimes it'll look... A little funky but you know what I'm trying to capture the overall mass and the overall motion of our character and we're coming up on our last one here so try to make it as best you can and hopefully you got warmed up and everything I like funky things <laughs> Yeah, funky, funky things are, are great, you know? <clears throat> and I'm not, as you can see, I'm not focused too much on like details or hair or anything like that. And you can also see I ran out of space. <laughs> But I'm just scribbling, just going on with it as best as I can. And that was the last one for 30 seconds. And we're just going to jump right into 15. So we're going to do 15 one minutes. And we're just going to go right into it. And I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm still just going to be word approaching this as silhouettes not really worrying too much about the details and such but now that we have more time i can be a little bit more intentional and just like a little bit cleaner i'm not gonna be maybe too clean about everything but just like a little bit more than usual um and things that i like to look out for are kind of the flow and direction of the pose so like the pinches in the back and also like the direction and flow that the legs are going in that's kind of what I am focusing on and paying attention to um, the other thing too is like I'm not worrying too much about how close in likeness the silhouette looks to the character i'm a bit more focused on the pose and the angle of how the body is turning so i'm starting to think more about like the personality and how the character is standing and all that kind of stuff first this one's a bit hard because she's reaching out you know maybe i'll include the i'll include the tutu or whatever this is the dress tutu dress <laughs> i'll include that it's like part of it anyways sometimes the goal at the end of this is to maybe like look back after this session 
and be like, huh, I wonder if I can turn this into a character or can I turn this into a fully developed drawing, you know, kind of thing. Or at least that's how uh, I like to think about it sometimes is like if I look back, would I know what I just drew or am I going to look at it and be like, this is a giant blob and I don't know what I drew. <laughs> And if you want to start stylizing your piece, you can start doing that as well. So he has like a very big, massive square type body. So maybe for the entire piece, since he's also wearing this, I don't know, leather, leather skirt, skirt thing. I don't know what it would be called. I'd turn his whole entire figure to a very like squarish massive plank looking thing like that's one way to think about it tutu is a funny word we do not say tutu enough Ooh, this one's a nice one i also gotta keep track of how many we've done i think we've done this is our fourth one I believe. And for him, it's the personality is coming in from the shoulders. So I'm going to try to, that's why I was like trying to emphasize it. I'm kind of ignoring his shoulder muscles on the top. So the great thing about trying to do a gesture drawing for animation is you know, you don't have to worry too much about accuracy of anatomy. Not too much. I'm not saying to completely throw away anatomy out the window, but you can kind of ignore it for a little bit because you want to focus more on the pose and the energy of the pose. Oh, and I think I forgot. I don't think I finished out this like thought that I was like saying, which is you don't have to capture the likeness of the character that you're drawing. So if all your characters, if you look back and they all look the same, uh, I think that's okay. Because at the end of the day, if you are successful in capturing the pose and the energy of it, then it doesn't really quite matter too much if you captured the likeness of the person. So whether they're really like tall, skinny, large, you know, um, short, you know doesn't really matter too much because if you can capture the energy and the direction of the pose you can change up the character afterwards however you want and that's kind of what it is when it comes to animation is that you'll take video references and you basically want to try to turn it into a the character you're trying to draw uh that was five Uh, I'm just going to try to fit it in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So for arm proportions, um, if you're having trouble with them, I just turn them into sticks for now. kind of Or triangular sticks. So this guy is probably a good example. You can see here, I'm just making very thin on the hand, but then... It's wider at the top and it creates this very dynamic uh, kind of silhouette and striking pose. So maybe I'll do that for the next few ones. I'll turn them into this triangular type shape. Kind of like a starfish, basically. And in that way, it's like very easy and quick to draw. And it's less focused on... Um, it's less focused on on uh, proportions and how accurate it is you're focused more on the position and where things are angled towards yeah like for the example this guy his hands are coming up in front of him so it's kind of hard to tell so the overall shape that he's making that i would like to capture is the arm that's sticking out and then the legs and how they're bent Oh, and for those who are 
curious as to what site we're using, I am using Line of Action. This is a great kind of site that I use pretty much all the time if I'm unable to attend like a live life drawing session. Uh, it's great for like uh, references and it's also great for giving out pretty dynamic and interesting poses. And I think it's like community run. So like a lot of people submit photos and everything. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Let me see, where did I line it up? This way I can see how far I can move the photo. Okay, I think I have a general idea as to how far I can move my canvas. Thank you, Joe Road, for letting me know the photos covering it. Uh, and if um, you're not quite sure, there's a timer at the upper right corner. So I think we've drawn eight so far. So we're almost there. We're almost done with the warm up. This is warm up, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's a uh, too much information, Levi. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Faye. Yeah. Where do you have the pictures? Uh, we're using a site right now. We're using a site called Line of Action. Yeah, it would... You know, my kind of thought on silhouette and warm-ups is to keep it loose you know and not worry too much about accuracy or, or not too like i mean still try to be as accurate as you can but you know it's a bit looser because it's just scribbles And then when we get into like the bean and everything, that I feel like that's even more so the case because it's like it's a bean, and you know it's not gonna look like a human person, you know. It's, uh... So there's no point in worrying too much about anatomy and accuracy. Is the prop necessary? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes it's props are useful. Sometimes they help give us, um, high things down. You know, it's, uh, it's almost like a challenge. Because it helps make you keep track of how accurate your, uh, your angles are. But I don't know if that answers your, your question if props are necessary. I think so. I think sometimes props can be helpful and make the pose more interesting. Ninja bunny. It is a ninja bunny. It's a nunchuck. Nunchuck bunny. Oh, you know, uh, if we had that pose a little longer, I really liked how thick the boots were at the bottom. So, would have loved to have really emphasized those boots. Oh, how many have we done? Done five. Okay, so we've done, we have five more. So this one and then four more, basically. Oh, I said I was gonna try to draw everything in a more triangular way. Okay, I'll, I'll do it for do it for this one. 
so I turn the upper arm and the forearm into basically triangles and I kind of do the same thing with the bo upper body as well. I'm turning them into triangles but then I overlap them and it makes it a lot faster and a lot easier to map out what the pose is doing. And again, I don't have to worry too much about proportions or anatomy. It's Again, it's all about the character. Oh, it's it's because every time I talk, it's uh, my avatar's mouth will move. So if I stop talking, it should like stop moving its mouth. Oh, does it do it? <laughs> uh, it might be catching like the wind or not the wind. I'm not drawing outside uh, the <laughs> computer fan. I have a computer nearby and the fans kind of loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, yep, my mic sensitivity. Are people's drawings you're drawing outside no way that's that's pretty cool i would love to be able to draw outside but i always get like too uh too conscious you know it's like oh my goodness everybody will know i'm drawing them <laughs> or uh you know what if i look at them and then they looked at me right as i looked at them and be like oh that's kind of kind of awkward uh you know <laughs> and then you know that person will look at me as like yeah i i, I know you were drawing me i'm like uh duh. <laughs> you know? covers up the background music. oh <laughs> okay yeah i guess it depends on maybe how loud you have my volume up and um yeah add the hat please okay I'll, I'll do it i'll do it for you random citizen the homeless are <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'll add it for you um how many are we on we are on the fourth one so this is the second last one is that guy drawing me yeah exactly and I commend anyone who is able to, you know, freely draw publicly and not be bothered because I wish I could do that. But, you know, if I if I have a group of friends with me, it's not too big of a deal. I don't mind that. OK, this is the last last one. And it's a tough, tough one because it's a bit of foreshortening happening. So for silhouettes, you want to always try to be as clear as you can as to what's happening. Uh, but when it's foreshortened, it makes it a little bit hard. Uh, so like... I want to space out the legs and the arms and make sure that's clear. So I'm changing the pose a little bit. Not by too much, but I want to make it clear as to what's happening. Because there's foreshortening, which means the head is closer to the camera and it'll be bigger and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay. Wow, that was it. Woo. And I th let me check the schedule there we finished the two minutes or 15 minutes okay so now we're moving on to the bean and this is i mean if people are curious this is what it looked like so far we'll take a little bit like a short ish 
break. Um, but yeah, this is what mine looks like so far. This was all the one minute ones, so maybe I'll write this here. This is one minute. It's looking not too bad, I think. The bean, yes, we are on to the bean. Uh, and then I think this up to here. These were my 30 seconds. Honestly, sometimes I feel like my 30 seconds don't look that much different from my one minutes. <laughs> but I always like doing 30 seconds because I feel like they're a good warm up. You know, it's like you're like panicking as time's running down. You should draw a bagel sometime. <laughs> No, the bean is the new new bagel. Yeah. Often bean enjoyer. Yeah, beans beans rule the world. Okay, so just taking a bit of a break. Grab a drink if you need to. I am drinking coffee. Um Honestly, I don't know if coffee does anything. Don't drink it if you're not old enough. I, I feel like good good time to drink coffee would be like maybe end of high school. <laughs> but water's good too. Water's good for drinking. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like that was a good break. And we're going to go move on to two minutes. I see what did I write? I wrote okay, we're doing five beans and then we're doing five pillows. <laughs> it's your nemesis. <laughs> okay. Cr Cracking <laughs> water brand. Shh. Don't 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 uh don't mention it, Sarah. <clears throat> okay so hot tea hot tea and hot chocolate i like those options as well okay so we are gonna get started we're gonna be doing two minutes again uh doesn't matter if you want to do the next 10 minutes all with the bean uh you can or all with the pillow that's fine too I'm going to be doing half half and I'm going to start off with the bean and then move on to the pillow just because I think the beans a bit easier. So it's like a nice way to ease into it because the pillow you can add folds, wrinkles, the seam lines and all that kind of stuff. And it makes it a little bit trickier. So, yeah. And we're going to start in three, two, one. Uh, and I'm going to change my brush to, I think, this one. Let me gonna lower the opacity. Uh, oh, and another tip for Krita. If you want to quickly change the opacity, it's the letter I and O. So if you press O, it increases the opacity by 10, and then I decreases the opacity by 10. So kind of like a... Neat thing in case anyone is using Krita and they're curious as to how to adjust certain things. We got two minutes, so we got a lot of time. I'm going to focus more on uh, line weight and now how clean it is. So we're taking almost like a 180, whereas in the beginning I was focused more on scribbling it and making it messy and just trying to capture it as quickly as possible but now i'm going to focus more on <clears throat> kind of line cleanliness i i guess you could say <laughs> that's a weird way of putting it but yeah line cleanliness and personality I'm trying to give my bean some personality <laughs> And you know what? If it changes what you think the pose actually is doing, that's okay as long as you kind of give some personality to your bean. Uh, 
because what you don't want is some plain looking uh, bean that's boring looking and doesn't have any characteristics. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm putting some joints in you, you don't have to for the, like the elbows and and everything but yeah you know I, I forgot who asked if props are important uh, yeah you know I feel like this bean pose right here without the blanket doesn't quite uh, work oh I forgot to put in the image oh my goodness I'm so sorry <laughs> <clears throat> But uh, this this bean over here is what you can kind of maybe try to imagine what it looks like. Nice background. Um, thank you. <laughs> oh, we got one minute. Uh, I can do this in one minute. Yeah. In six months, I'm going to start university. It's 2D animation. Any advice? Uh, have fun. Uh, I wish I got into animation during my university days. No, because it's a, it's a environment where everyone is kind of doing the same thing and you're all going through the same things too so i would say have fun with it i think that's awesome there's a twisting in his body and you might be like oh that sounds really obvious but i'm not only adding the twisting into the body but i'm also trying to add the twisting to his leg so i'm following the momentum that the bean shape had and started with and I'm trying to add it to the legs as well <clears throat> uh, yeah I forgot to bring up the image so <laughs> it was my bad I was I was drawing it but then I forgot to put it up on stream so we'll do maybe like one extra one. Maybe. Oh. You know what? I drew this one incorrectly. Oh, and if you're using the lasso tool, I would highly recommend assigning a shortcut to the lasso tool. Because it's super helpful. Uh, and to do that... It's under settings and then configure Krita. And then you can just type in lasso tool or freehand selection is what I think it's called on Krita. And you can assign it a shortcut, which I highly recommend because Krita for some reason assigned no shortcut for, for the uh, freehand selection tool, which is kind of odd. <clears throat> I was struggling to figure out what to do with the leg in the back. Because I feel like the focus is on the leg in the front. But. Yeah. Uh, depends if you're in Canada or the States. I know in Canada. Most people recommend Sheridan and Seneca, but, <clears throat> oh, that's the entire page. Ooh. Okay. Uh, but in the States, I actually don't know. Not too sure. I feel like the typical ones everybody brings up is um, CalArts and I th maybe RizD has a pretty good animation. Actually, not sure. Actually, how many did I do? I did three. Okay. 
So I'm going to do two more beans and then we're, I'm going to move on to uh, the pillow afterwards. I think I don't actually know art center if it has one. I mean, you know, that's why we have Google. We can ask Google anything. So you can just ask Google which what kind of American animation schools are there. But I know Canada, it's pretty much either Sheridan or Seneca in Ontario. Um, and then in BC, so British Columbia, actually, I'm not too sure. Because sometimes like new schools pop up and, or like they start building up a reputation over the years. And it's like, oh, yeah, that school never had a program before. And then I get told by students like, yeah, this school is now has an animation program. And I'm like, oh, OK. <clears throat> yeah, Sheridan's the most famous, but the entrance rate is pretty low, uh, especially if you're international. So, yeah. Is being self-taught reliable? Um, it is. It it can be. It depends on who you are. You know, um, if you're hardworking and dedicated, <laughs> I think self-teaching yourself is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's something that you know by attending school, like whether it's like hours or attending a university or a college or online class. Um, it's the community that you build, you know, that it's kind of irreplaceable. It's hard to find. I mean, yeah, I know there's discord and like maybe forums for, do people use forums still actually? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so, I'm so out of, uh, touch when it comes to, uh, social stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, self-teaching can be fine. I think it's just dependent on how hardworking you are and how focused you can be. But it's also um, about the critiques. Now it looks like this person's about to kick the other, the other bean. <laughs> uh, let's let's just move move this bean character a little bit over, <laughs> so it doesn't look like it's getting kicked. Yes, so feedback is great. Feedback is probably the one thing that is the one thing that's hard to get from self-teaching. Um, which is really useful for growing as an artist, having critiques. Well, bean versus bean, yeah. What? Well, I didn't draw it. This one was holding a gun originally. <laughs> Maybe it's holding a ruler now, and then the other bean's like about to go kick it. I don't know. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the pillow version. I'm gonna do five more. <clears throat> as long as it's good feedback. Um. Uh, it, it honestly is, depends because everybody has a different opinion and depends on what you're kind of going for. If you're going for realism or cartooning, character design, everybody's going to have a little bit of a different input and you'll get different feedbacks depending on what you're going for. So, I don't know. Uh, not all feedback is good feedback. I guess we'll, uh, we can put it there. But I feel like when it comes to feedback, it's good feedback is also kind of like a discussion. Uh, it, you know, you know, you're getting some good feedback when the person you're going talking about it with treats it more like a conversation rather than just, uh, hey, you did this wrong. Let me teach you how to fix it. Or at least I, I, I also try to go about it in that way, you know, 
treat it more like a conversation. Okay. I mean, getting feedback's tough. I remember the first time going into like art school, it's just like, uh, someone's gonna tell me how to do things or tell me what's wrong with my piece. Um, but I think like, as you get, as you do more feedback, the better you get at understanding, um, what's, how to read the room, I guess is one thing too, like reading and trying to understand what the person is looking for. Uh, sometimes a person just might be really burnt out and they're not really looking for you to tell them like, Hey, your drawing has all these problems with it. But yeah, feedback, feedback's tough, but it's good. It's always good to get feedback. <laughs> oh, and uh, since we're on to the pillow now, I don't know if anyone's trying it. The way that I like to separate it, or think about the pillow, is to treat it like a torso study. So the chest and the hip. And you can see for her, she's got a very pinched back, but then a somewhat stretched out front. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize and exaggerate on the pillow. And even though she has her right leg sticking out, I can't really do that on the pillow just because we're limited <laughs> as to the possibilities of what a pillow can do. Um, but I just want to capture more of like the arms and the uh, position of the legs, I guess you could say. Maybe I'll try to angle the arm a bit lower on this end. And I'm just going to have this leg actually stick out behind instead. And then we'll make this poofier. So when I'm doing the pillow, I'm not treating it like it's a person. I'm trying to think of like what a pillow would look like as its form is changing um, when it's bending and twisting. Because it's not like a human person, you know, it's got fluff. It's cushions on the inside is going to move around as it's bending and folding. So I am trying to imagine what it would look like. So that's why I think the pillow is a little bit harder because it requires a little bit more of a three dimensional understanding of what's happening, but also how you can turn it into a character while still making it feel like it's a pillow. <clears throat> beans matter now but you gave the limb, beans limb why not the pillow um it's kind of just personal preference for the challenge uh because like the bean is just upper and lower portion of the body but with the pillow you do have these uh tassels or these flaps which can either represent the limbs or represent the emotion or expression with the pillow so that's why I don't add any limbs um, and yeah I don't know I mean if you want to add limbs to it uh, I'm not I'm not against it <laughs> yeah I tend to use uh, either Instagram or Pinterest for reference images because yeah Google images will kind of repeat the type of images you get but Pinterest will kind of try to generate what it thinks you want so you get a little bit more variety I think <laughs> Taco Bell I have not had Taco Bell in a really long time <clears throat> and I think it's also the pillow is a nice challenging exercise in making you go like, okay, what do, what do the ears on the top, what are like, what are they doing? Like, what do they represent? So for her, she's kind of swinging a sword down 
So maybe one of the tassels can represent like the hand, but the other one, I don't know, maybe it can just be hanging down on the side. So it's a it's like a challenge. You you have restrictions and those restrictions challenge you on trying to figure out and analyze what you can do with the pose. Yeah, let's uh, let's all agree to just go to Taco Bell afterwards. There's actually not that many Taco Bells, uh, near me. I think I only know of one. I mean, there's some in the mall, I guess. But it's not a lot of Taco Bells. more clear less extra stuff yeah yeah i think pinterest is the good one yeah. trying to figure out like how much fold do i put the more folds you put in the more it looks like there's like a giant sharp bend Oh, this one's this one's an interesting one. So you can kind of see that I start off the bean similar to, uh, I mean the pillow. I started off similar to the bean, but just like, and then I start adding the ears, and it changes it a little bit, or so-called ears. I don't know if. I call them ears or well I guess they're not technically tassels but I use I like using the carpet from Aladdin as an example of how to turn an inanimate square rectangular object into a character and how to give it personality and I think the carpet from Aladdin was like a really good example of how to do that well, that's kind of where I'm coming from when it comes to the pillow and how I'm trying to add personality to it. Ears, yeah, ears. Little little flap floppy floppy thingy. <laughs> I don't know. A dancing pillow. Yeah, you know, this is kind of like a dance sequence now. You know, you got different stages of how it's moving. <laughs> Actually, it kind of looks like it. I feel like this could work as like a dance sequence and everything. Uh, oh, that was five. Wow, that was fast. Okay. Let's see. Where am I? Just gonna like combine combine these two. I feel like the pillow looks so like wholesome, and the the beans are kind of just quirky, weird weird and quirky. Yeah, for sure you can push uh, proportions. I think it's uh, good to start pushing some proportion. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know how it is for everyone, but having, um, doing these exercises where you don't have to worry too much about proportions, I feel like burns you out less because it's, well, at least I, I don't know. I find that I get burnt out less because it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not meant to be perfect 
or anything. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Our five or our ten kind of more stylized, exaggerated exercises or studies, I guess. How did it go for uh, everyone? How are the beans and pillows? Did people find it challenging? Or... Uh... Or was it like, nah, this is nothing. Oh yeah, you can uh, share it. I guess this is a good time to mention it, but we do have social medias, so or different types of social medias and socials that you can check out. Um, so we are on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Discord. So if you ever want to join our Discord, I believe it's in the description below um as well as our other socials but yeah you can post your drawings and the stuff that you created during the stream and share it uh maybe i'll take a look at it as well and maybe i'll comment on some of them on the discord but yeah um... oh only only box pillows yeah does it look like a burrito i yeah i guess it kind of looks like a burrito you're just thinking so much about a taco bell you know you got the beans and the you know uh i guess it's not a taco but you know burrito you put beans and burrito it's similar uh yeah reference is super important uh but sometimes i'll Treat it like an exercise to just freehand, you know, see what I can come up with, if I can come up with something. Uh, and then if I get stuck on a pose and I'm not quite sure as to um, what something should look like, then I'll start looking for references. Like, I might take photos of myself or uh, video is also good, like videotape yourself doing something. Or you can um, go on the internet, you know, if you're... If you're like, ah, eh, I don't want to take a photo of myself. I'm just going to go on the internet. That works too. Yep. The next thing we're going to draw is cabbage and lettuce. No, I'm just... I mean, you're good if you wanted to create a cabbage character. Next. Okay. Oh, yeah. Movies. Movies are good too. Like, good movie screenshots. Great for doing studies with those. Yeah, so reference is always welcome. Never, never ignore uh, references. Okay, so I think, let's see. What time is it? Oh, we got one hour left. I think that's a... I think we got... Okay, I think this is good. We are going to move on to five minute poses now. Uh, maybe I think mm, actually 10 minute poses. We're going to do 10 minute poses. And this time I actually have to set a timer because I'm not we're not using this website anymore. We're going to be I'm going to be putting up some images onto my screen and you can use those as the reference images. Uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to be stylizing them. So I'm going to be turning, drawing some like characters based on these images. And then after the 10 minute poses, we're going to move on to our long pose, which is the exaggerated pose. So, yeah. Um, so to clarify, we are doing three 10 minute poses. And, but then I'll also see how much time we have left afterwards. See, see what we'll do. Three, three ten minute poses. We're drawing three figures and they'll each be ten minutes long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so not really much to it, but I would say as we do this, try to draw it 
however you can you know there's no real guideline on how you can turn this character into a car or this figure into a cartoon pose it's really uh up to you and how you decide to stylize it or the style that you choose is also completely up to you as well so yeah yeah we're, i'm gonna be putting the photo up yes <laughs> i will remember let's see okay so the, this is going to be the first image uh let me know if you need it bigger uh or if this size is good enough put up the photo like a it's like a rally do it Okay, so I'm gonna set the time now. So it's gonna be for 10 minutes. If you hear the timer, um, that means time's up, obviously. Um, but I'm using my phone, so I'll let you, I'll give an update as to how much time we have left. But yeah, I'm using my phone. A bigger, bigger, larger. Is uh, do you want it to take up the entire screen, or uh, this is good enough? cries for a photo yeah <laughs> uh well i've started the time already so you have nine minutes and 30 seconds <clears throat> okay let me see Don't take too much the canvas space. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on how much space I'm taking up so I don't so I don't accidentally uh you know block the drawing and you guys can't see what's happening. Don't worry. I am keeping an eye. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to start. So remember this one, uh, the goal of this one is to turn it into a character. So you're not necessarily copying exactly what this care, this image looks like. So you don't have to design a similar outfit. It doesn't even have to be a similar looking character. But what you're trying to do is take the pose and the expression and the vibe, I guess you can say, of this character and turn it into something else. Um, I mean, if you want to keep it similar, that's okay too. But goal is going to be trying to turn it into something else. And I am doing this, even though I looked for this image, I am doing this fresh like everyone else. <laughs> so I don't know how this will turn out necessarily. So I'm just kind of analyzing it as an overall mannequin figure. Uh, and I'm trying to also get a feel for the direction that I want for it. I'm taking notice of things like where the shoulder is and where the position of the hand is and what the hand is doing. The tiny stuff like that. Um, Again, kind of like what I mentioned, I'm not focused too much on the making it look exactly like character. <clears throat> what is she holding? Uh, I think it's a mirror. But I, again, it doesn't have to be a mirror. 
you know, if you want it to be something else. Uh, we got six minutes left, so. This might be, you can treat this kind of like a warm-up to get a feel for how to adjust some stuff, but. Yeah. That arm is super short. I mean, super long. Way too long of an arm. <clears throat> hmm. Kind of pose. Kind of reminds me of like uh, the treasure holding. So maybe I'll turn this into a character holding a treasure piece. <clears throat> Who's the fairest in the land? True? Yeah. Mm. No, I don't know. Make it maybe like a Indiana Jones or something. I don't know. We got a. Uh... Four and a half minutes left. So it doesn't have to be super clean or anything. Because we are transforming it. And transforming it takes a bit of thinking process. A thought process. So if it's not quite done, I think it's okay. Can treat this more of like an ideation uh, time to kind of explore and see what you can transform it into it's so like a very you know maybe I'll keep the whole Indiana Jones character throughout the entire piece so <laughs> it might not match the pose all the time but I'm gonna stick with the whole like okay it's gonna be Indiana Jones ish type of character every single time And it'll be like he's holding like a skull or something. You know, so I'm changing the pose of it to better match the character. What does Indiana Jones wear? Does he wear like cargo pants? I feel like he wears cargo pants. Not seen that movie in a long time. Yeah, exactly. He's holding a uh, home treasure. His treasure. We got two minutes. And does Indiana Jones wear boots? I think he wears boots. Indiana Jones goes hunting with uh, sandals on. I don't even know what kind of boots people wear. You know, you know what I'm like realizing. Like sometimes in the movies, I'm like, do they wear? There's no shoelaces, are there? Because I'm like, boots. Boots have shoelaces, but I feel like I never notice shoelaces when I'm, you know, when the, those characters are there. I know, it's a really random tangent. Treasure equals skull? 
uh, not if it's like the Crystal Skull, you know, the the last Indiana Jones movie. That that was the treasure that they were looking for. Was it worth it? Uh, I guess a lot of people didn't think it was worth it. I don't know if everyone's seen that movie. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah. Indiana Hamlet. Oh, yeah. Actually, I just looked up this image, so I don't know where it's from. Um, I don't know what kind of musical or Broadway show this is from. Could be, uh, could be Hamlet related, maybe. Okay, we got 30 seconds. This is uh, Indiana Jones before he became Indiana Jones, you know. This is a laptop bag, by the way. It is not a gun holster. <laughs> Can I try? Okay. Here we go. That was one pose down. I'm just going to move it over here to the side. And I'll just keep it there on the sides. So don't worry about it. And maybe I'll move this one too. So you can see what it used to look like afterwards. And... It looks like Tintin. Yeah, yeah. I feel like... Tintin style is so good for like quick sketches kind of thing. Okay, so that was the first image. And now this is the second one. Not adding a skirt. Hey, you know, maybe Indiana Jones wants to wear a skirt. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay. So now we are drawing a kickboxer, or I don't know, is it a kickboxer? Some kind of fighter, some kind of UFC fighter, kind of thing. So, let's see. Oh, right, I said I was going to turn every character into Indiana Jones. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try that. Going to focus more on the... How dynamic it is now would indiana jones be able to pull this off uh i don't know about that but <laughs> we will make it look like indiana jones can do this oh and these images are ones that i did find on pinterest so uh, i forgot what i typed in i probably just typed in dynamic pose or fighter kind of thing like boxer fighter maybe <clears throat> Made it a bit too big. Taekwondo. I mean, yeah, could be, could be doing martial arts. Uh, again, same thing with the other one. I'm just trying to build out a mannequin first, so kind of just blocking in what the overall body shape is doing, and then I start overlapping a design because i want to try to capture the structure first or at least that's how i i like to do things uh, some people might be like no I'll figure out the character at the same time but it's easier for me to figure out all the groundwork i guess you could say first and then overlap it afterwards Oh, I forgot the timer. Uh, let me see. We'll say that two minutes has passed, so I'll try to keep an eye on the clock. The cat won't let me draw. No, just uh, you know, include the cat in the drawing process. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep it on model meaning 
I'm gonna try to make these two drawings feel like it's the same character but that's gonna be kind of hard <laughs> but I'll try because I made the characters shorter than the models are because I feel like this looks more like we could say this is like young Indiana Jones another thing that I'm looking at too are the angles that the limbs are turning in so the leg over here I can see is turned to the side a little bit more and then this one is pointing up into the side a little bit so I'm just trying to figure that stuff out too maybe the fist can be closer to the face <clears throat> Sitting on my notebook. What it move? <laughs> that's that's called the uh, that's that's a uh, that's love. He's like, give me attention. That's when you know your cat loves you. When it bothers you. <laughs> and now for the hard part. Two. Was there a show? Like a young Indiana Jones show? I didn't, I didn't even know that. That's pretty cool if there is. like concentrating so I'm not <laughs> I'm not talking I'm like oh what was what would this what would he look like if he's kicking with a hat on let's see all oh, right I also gave him sleeves okay so he's got to have sleeves on uh Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how the body is turning. I think I might have positioned the head improperly, but that is fine. It's just like a quick exercise to like train yourself to like see it beyond the pose or the reference. Might have made the head too high maybe? I don't know. Does it matter where you start? Um, I don't think so. I feel like everybody has a different preference. So sometimes uh, I might start on the head so that I can keep everything like the head proportional if I think the head is important. Uh, but sometimes I like starting with the torso or like the chest first. But yeah, I feel like it's uh, kind of different for for everyone. Oh, I was like, why does my color look so different? Okay, I think we have three more minutes left. Also, how much time? Ooh, it's almost... Okay, we'll skip out on the the third one, and we're just going to jump into the long one after this one. Uh, let me see. 
a lot of this is also how I typically map out and rough out drawings it's a lot of scribbling and a lot of just like going with the flow trying to figure things out as I'm going I think I gave him shoelaces as well so young Indiana Jones oh where's the time there's no uh time uh digital time but I have it on my phone, so I'm trying to keep track of time that way. Yeah. And... Oh, he's wearing a satchel. Oh, that's going to be tough. Where would the... I don't know where his uh... satchel would be. It made him look too angry. Uh, he looks completely different. <laughs> There's no longer Indiana Jones. It looks more like a, I don't know, just some random guy picking a fight. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can start honestly anywhere. Um... It just depends on like what you find comfortable sometimes i think i said two minutes did i say two or three i think okay we got like one minute left so finish up whatever you finish as much as you can of the drawing and we'll go into the long pose afterwards tintin jones hamlet Yes, I've combined three of them into one. One character. New uh, new animated series. Everybody loves a reboot, but what if it's a reboot and a combination of other properties? Okay, got three, two, one, and that is it for this pose. And then now it's just till the end of the stream. We're going to do a long pose with this one last image. And uh, this one's kind of up to you how you want to approach it. I'm going to be, based on the poll, I'm going to be doing a hyper stylized, hyper exaggerated uh, pose. And again, similar. I'm just going to see how it goes. Um... see how I can pull it off <clears throat> really no way I liked a uh, night at the museum when I was a kid but I don't know anything about it now okay so this is the image that we are gonna be stylizing getting back right on time hey I would honestly like to check out the Night of the Museum animated thing. Oh, it's on Disney Plus. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll check it out. Um, and yeah, so you can uh, start this whenever you want. Um, we're going to be doing this all the way till the end of the stream, which is, I think, about like 30 minutes. So again, I'll keep track of time. I'll put a timer just to remind myself to end stream or and such. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and uh, if you guys are enjoying our stream so far, Feel free to drop us a like and if you like what we're doing with free arts education definitely subscribe we upload a lot of videos and tutorial videos uh, as well as different types of streams as well so if you like that you can get notifications by subscribing yeah um yeah i'm gonna start on this i Again, I'm on the same boat with you guys. I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> okay. 
いいな。Frog in a suit. What? Oh, is it like a full on series? Or is it more of like those、uh, shorts? Because、uh, sometimes Disney does those like shorts where it's like not a real series, but they make like small five, ten minute videos, that kind of stuff. Let's see how I'm stylizing it. is I'm kind of trying to look for things to exaggerate, and I'm trying to look for a lot of different connections. <laughs> no longer burrito, that is right. We are moving away from the burrito, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm trying to look for kind of angles and relations things have, and seeing how I can stylize it. So I really like how. I don't know the position of the legs and how kind of almost parallel they are. So I want to take that and see if I can push that a little bit. Taking that shape. So I'm looking for the relations of things. And maybe I might even exaggerate the size of it by having the legs be really up close to the camera and the shoes be a lot bigger. Than they actually are, and then have the body and and everything else be a little bit smaller. So I'm forced perspective. I'm making it a forced perspective shot, but I'm like really trying to exaggerate it a lot. It's gonna probably require quite a bit of tune up. Oh right, you can't really see it, but this is what I'm going for right now. Gonna try to go for a force perspective shot. We'll see how it goes.、Um, and I'm gonna really warp it so I am keeping track of certain angles. So these angles, I'm kind of trying to keep track of that to make it feel consistent ish. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually love doing these a lot,、uh, and sometimes they turn out to be failures. But <laughs> I actually kind of enjoy that process of it because you never really know how exactly it's going to turn out. But there's almost like a frenetic energy and almost like a kind of an interesting, exciting risk to it because you just don't know if it'll turn out well or not. And you're just like, Hoping it will. I might have to make the leg a bit higher over here. And I'm trying to draw it as fast as I can. Just I don't know.、Uh, there's like a momentum to it that I'm trying to keep up and match. With what, like, what's going on in my head, and see if I can cover as much ground as possible, and seeing how well I can <clears throat> capture what I'm feeling or seeing in my head. So, get ready to see a lot of scribbles, scribblers, a lot, very scribbly. <laughs> Does the brush pencil matter? Ah.、Uh, Not really, but I come from a traditional like drawing background, so I like it when my brushes can get as close to feeling tr as traditional as I can get them to be. But in the end, it doesn't really matter too much, as long as it's able to you feel comfortable with it, and you like how it's working, 
and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I speak. Uh, this, I think I come from a traditional drawing background. I like it when my brushes are more traditional feeling, but that's just me. And then the head's going to be pretty small, and I might, will probably have to change the angle of the head as well, because I've completely changed the angle and how things are kind of lining up. So, you're going to have to adjust, adjust it. Yeah, the good thing about doing exercises like these too is sometimes you get so caught up on how you're pushing it that sometimes in the moment it looks really cool and then you look back at it and you're like, oh, I should have done it like that or oh, I kind of messed up over there kind of a thing. Okay, so this is kind of the flow and structure that I have so far. Don't know exactly. I don't have the details, but that's kind of the thing. I don't want to worry too much about details. I want to capture the, the flow and the vibe that's in my head at the moment. It's kind of interesting because we started off with like really smooth and rounded bean shapes <laughs> and pillows. And then and then as we get to the longer and longer poses, my drawings get more and more frenetic and more and more like chaotic. Anything sideways, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I only stick to a conversation for like 30 seconds? <laughs> oh, I just thought uh, you, you, I'm your favorite person. No, thanks, thanks. <laughs> oh, this is a uh, no longer. <laughs> No longer Indiana Jones. Uh, we have gone beyond the Jones. It, this is just uh, this is just this person, but or the character on the screen. But now I'm just hyper stylizing it. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. I will say though, I think. I start messing up once I get into the face. And I feel like that's kind of how it is with a lot of people. We all tense up a bit with the face. Yeah, my go-to style is more on like the angular approach. So I guess that's why everything is very like sharp looking. <clears throat> Yeah, oh, awesome. Nice to see that you're joining the Discord, Juliana. Yeah, everyone's pretty nice there, and we're all like very encouraging and supportive of everyone on there. Okay, we got about like 20 minutes, I think, ish. This is why you don't draw humans. <laughs> it's okay, I. I totally get the sentiment.
And this arm, I might have pushed it too much. I don't know. Something about this arm over here bugging me. I'll see if I can try to at least get a somewhat clean drawing, maybe, by the end. Or, like, you can kind of see the direction that I'm going in. But, or not direction, I mean, you can see it clearly what I'm going for, but, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, try to get it roughly cleaned up. <clears throat> uh, maybe I'll ignore the bag. You know, the bag is disrupting the flow. I like... Oh, she's wearing high... Is she wearing, like, high-riding jeans? Or is this, like, an over... Oh, she's wearing overalls. Oh. Didn't even know that. I don't know if she was wearing overalls. <laughs> Powerpuff Girls approach? What's the, uh... What's the Powerpuff Girls approach? Do I sketch through? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm working digitally, so I like to just create a new layer and then draw on top of it. <clears throat> like, I lower the opacity and draw on top of it. Um, but I do find that that tends to make me lose the phonetic energy that it originally had. So, I don't know. Try to... keep that energy Oh, you know what? I guess I can make the legs a bit longer over here. Uh, well, you didn't have to replicate her, so I'm not exactly copying how she looks like exactly, because you can see I've completely warped the kind of proportions and everything because my goal for this one was to stylize it as much as I could uh, but if you wanted to do it in the same way as we did beforehand like turn it into a completely new looking character that was like that was fine there's no problem with that but I would say try to make it different from the reference photo and whichever way that you decided to do that in is kind of up to you, really. <clears throat> yeah, so I think this, is, like at the stage that I'm at right now, this would be my kind of rough, rough uh, cleanup. Rough cleanup, I guess. The initial one, the the layer be underneath that. This one is what I would call like my. I don't know, uh, feeling it out, you know, figuring out what it should look like, what it can look like. And then this one is my cleanup of that to like refine things, figure out like where folds might be, what the face might look like and all that kind of stuff and make sure like some proportional things are correct. So it's kind of what I'm doing. Shoes are probably going to be the hardest part here because I'm trying to really push it. Um, but because I've changed it, the angle and perspective of these shoes going to change too. Kind of got to keep that in mind when I edit it. I'm just making the, like, the front foot bigger and closer every time I draw, draw it. I think because I've changed the angle and I'm exaggerating it, I'm probably going to make it a lot. I'm, we're going to see a bit more of the bottom, more so than the forehand, I think.
Oh, do they not have fingers? Really? Oh, I gotta, I gotta watch that. I never grew up watching Powerpuff Girls, so I didn't know that. Sixties fashion for homework? That sounds awesome. Wait, why do you have to write that about sixties fashion? That seems so like out of the blue. Is it because I don't like Josh you so well? Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm kind of following what's on the screen, like my reference image, but I'm also uh, thinking about it as like a giant form kind of thing. But because it's also forced perspective, uh, I'm kind of winging it as well <laughs> a little bit. I love drawing like forced perspective legs though. It's It's always like really cool this is like right up in your face and everything okay now we get to the hard part draw on the body no. maybe we see less at the back over here like 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 I do think yeah I do like saying that a lot. How much time do we have? Got, got about 10 more minutes. Realistic fingers. I'm sure there's a drawing of the Powerpuff Girls with realistic, realistic hands. Or fingers. Thank you. Yeah. It's definitely going to require a lot of uh, fine tuning because the body is not quite lining up. So this is where your understanding of anatomy would come into play and proportions and drawing through things. So you can kind of see how things are lining up technically and all that kind of stuff. Because um, right now I would say the this portion over here it's not quite working as well as the shoe part down there for me if i were to like critique myself that's how i would what i would what i'm like thinking about and telling myself as i'm looking at this i'm i'm thinking like okay what's working what's not working and how can i fix it how can i adjust it and all that uh but that's going to come down to me also analyzing my own figure and where I've proportioned things and yeah Elvis looks like your dad what <laughs> or your dad looks like Elvis what It's five. Well, it's five fifty for me here, which means we got about ten minutes left. Uh, I'm gonna try to exaggerate the face. gonna look a little weird at the end probably I would say that I still haven't quite figured out exactly how this is kind of working together and coming together so 
This would all be in the exploration phase. Just trying to see what works. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Elvis. That's kind of interesting. The, does your dad ever go to those um, Elvis conventions <laughs> where people dress up like Elvis? Uh, I'm going for a little bit more of like a stylized cartoony phase so usually when that happens the ear the eyes are a bit bigger and then the ear is actually closer to the f uh, to the eyes usually um, and because she's looking I've tilted the angle upwards it means that the ear is probably gonna be maybe down here Probably not going to see it too much. Uh, yeah. So this would be my kind of starting phase. I guess you could say. So this is probably, this is what, so I usually like to draw in different phases. So right now this would kind of be uh, where I've locked down where I want certain details, but I would, my cleanup would then go in and start figuring out all like the dimensions of things and whether things are lining up properly and kind of connecting in a way that feels believable. So I would start turning these all into kind of mannequin boxes and trying to figure out the prisms and the dimensions and, and all that kind of stuff. Because right now I've got the idea and the gesture down that I want, but it's not quite connecting in a way that I'm satisfied with, I guess. Uh, so that's what I would do next is to go back in and try to find ways to clean it up and everything. And it definitely would be, it would help when I kind of block things in with like shadows and dark, dark things like dark colors because their boots are darker and all that kind of stuff. So that would definitely help afterwards. Okay, I actually like it better like this. Okay, so we got about like five minutes left. Oh my goodness, we got not a lot of time. Okay. So it's kind of the direction that I would get into. It's not done, but yeah, this is like a good start for, for me, I would say, for myself. And how is everybody else's drawings going? Are people doing what I'm doing, like hyper stylizing? Or are people... Did people turn into a cartoon character? Like, what were some things that people are doing? I keep shrinking the back. So I'm like, it's too big. It looks odd. Okay, I think that's a bit closer. So yeah, I want to like quickly just shade in the boots. We got five more minutes left. Frog does not look happy. <laughs> Did you turn yours into a frog? That's awesome though. I don't do humans. That's just <laughs> no. So did you turn it into like an animal? I mean, that's that's cool too. Let me make the shoes a bit bigger for me. I don't know, maybe I might finish this up on my own time and maybe I'll post this on the Discord so people can see what it ended up looking like. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, that part is over there is uh, the arm. This part for sure is what's... No, not, not there. This part for sure is what's bothering me the most. And that's where like prisms and structure would help to start uh, cementing it a little bit better. Because right now, it's this is what I would call the rough planning stage or a cleaned up rough stage. <laughs> So we're still on like phase one, but as like a gesture exercise, this is like pretty great. And like, I like to do this a lot on my own free time as well. And uh, give, I mean, we gave ourselves 30 minutes. So this is what I did in 30 minutes, usually giving yourself maybe an hour or an hour and a half. Max would be like two and a half hours is a good way to uh, study this. So yeah. I think this is like pretty pretty good start pretty good kind of approach to this don't have on our delay christmas ad <laughs> yeah i don't know i like drawing in red so yeah <laughs> yeah so we do have discord so yeah if you guys want to join that feel free to check us out over there um, check. and I forgot to put the description uh, or uh, afterwards after the stream we'll probably put the, the link to line of action which is the site we were using and uh, credits to the song that I'm using. I'm only using one song. I hope nobody noticed. I probably people noticed, but <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, I also have to find out what it's called. So if you want to check it out, you can. But yeah, this is pretty much the end of the stream. We're coming up on that. I hope everybody had a lot of fun with this, and I hope uh, you know maybe you got a little bit better put in some kind of it's great that you like put some people put some time into gesture drawing because that's like the best way to grow and get better so yeah um this is it i'll like maybe make it a screen the image a bit bigger so you can this is what it looks like what i have so far <laughs> it's really scratchy <laughs> but yeah yeah thanks for joining everyone it was great talking with all of you you guys were really fun and funny to talk to while i was trying to figure the things out and trying to draw all this but yeah looks great thank you uh starla and action lines <laughs> will you add the bag oh the bag uh i don't i don't think so it kind of disturbs the flow of it, but I don't know. Maybe if I can find a way to add it. Yeah. Oh, and thanks, Sue Jasmine, for the $4 or $3.99. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh, it's a bit late, but we do have Patreon. If anybody wants to join our Patreon, <laughs> it comes with it comes with some perks. Here, I'll quickly flash the screen, <laughs> but here's the perks you get like discord emotes you get some uh, exclusive live recordings as well as some behind the scenes content for our youtube channel and our school so yeah but that's it thank you everybody thanks for joining us and maybe i'll see you guys on the discord yeah been fun keep your stick on <laughs> what <laughs> okay thanks joe road Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>